Greetings, brothers and sisters. This is the other Paul. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if you've been following my Facebook, I have just attended last Thursday a pro-life rally outside the New South Wales Parliament. Unfortunately, some politicians, including from the supposedly conservative Liberal Party, a bit of a contradiction in names for you American viewers, I'll, I'll explain one day. Um, but yes, this bill has been proposed from many members of the Parliament that will be opening up very, very, very liberal abortion rights, practically up until birth. Uh, to do so after 22 weeks will only require the signatures of two doctors, and I'm sure they'll be very discerning about their cases. Yeah, they totally won't just give in to the feelings of the woman. But anyway, uh, I went to this rally, and it was fantastic. We only had around four or three days' notice around-ish, even though... Legally speaking, we're supposed to give seven days notice to the government for having any demonstration inside the city, especially right near the parliament. Um, but they thought to be mischievous and pro proposed the bill itself around, pff, what, four or three days before it was introduced to the parliament. And uh, so we only had four or three days to prepare the rally. And we ended up doing it, and it was fantastic. Hundreds of people came along. Uh, <laughs> the MPs had to walk through our crowd just to get into the parliament, because um, we were camped right outside. Um, but it was fantastic. We did the good old chants, uh, making our voices heard, making the truth known, rather. That's more important than making any voice heard. Um, but yeah, it was absolutely fantastic. Um, but that is not what I'm going to be talking about today. I have a problem with the pro-life movement. Not a, not a massive one, but it's... It's big enough that it must be looked at. And it's a problem, I think, with our approach. And I hope to at least give a tangible example of this happening so it's not just me pulling something out of thin air. I think this, this, this problem is legitimate. And uh, you'll see why. Um, it's exemplified in, I think, the very recent statement from the Archbishop of Sydney, uh, Anthony Fisher. That's his name. Yeah, Anthony Fisher. Um, I don't deny his conviction at all. He is a good man of the Lord. Uh, he speaks out on these genuine issues, and this is a statement of his. It proves he's convicted about this issue. It's it's all well and good, but I just think many some of his statement choices just exemplify some of the wrongs that the pro-life movement has fallen into, and I'll, I'll explain why um, by reading. So, I'll start here. This week, it was announced that a private member's bill would be introduced immediately into Parliament that will allow abortion for any reason up until birth in New South Wales. The bill has yet to be released to the public, and as such, there has been no public inquiry into the subject. No opportunity for residents of New South Wales to make their views known to their MPs, and not even discussion in the state cabinet. So, this is my first problem of this statement, and of... Mm, not too many people, but enough who hold this hold this this view, this assumption, and this assumption is this this how do I say it? This massive. Sorry, I can't think of my words here. Just this massive upholding of language of Western liberal democracy, like oh, this needs to be discussed in the public. We need to talk about it in the. In the state cabinet and the government, there needs to be discussion, discussion, discussion. Let the people know. Let their voices be heard. Such and such. I, you, you'll see, you'll see my more deeper thoughts later in other videos. But in summary, I hate this language. I hate democratic languages, and I despise democracy. That's that's my short answer. Um, and here we have clergy like Anthony Fisher taking in this this liberal democratic language hook, line, and sinker, sinker that. One of the big problems of this issue is that people weren't people weren't able to discuss it on time, and wasn't much discussion in the state cabinet. He's a, he's a minister of God. There is no discussion to be had on this topic. His statement in this part should simply read: "This bill is evil. It must not be allowed to pass, lest the salvation of those who do be questioned." That's all he needs to say. It doesn't have to go those exact words, obviously, but along that sentiment. The, the public opinion, the discussion, shouldn't factor into it at all. It's God's will, nothing more. That's it. 
But that's not even the biggest problem here, and let me read on to show you why. It seems that Premier Gladys Berejiklian, Health Minister Brad Hazard, and the architects of this bill are determined for it to pass within days, with as little community discussion ugh, democracy language again, as possible, let alone providing those being asked to vote on it with enough information to do so in an informed manner. The bill is a bad one. It will allow abortion right up to birth if two doctors agree. It will require Catholic and other doctors and hospitals to collaborate by either taking part in the abortion or referring patients to someone who will. It is yet another attack another attack upon the rights of people of faith. Now, this part is the real kicker. Worst of all, it does absolutely nothing to provide alternatives for women distressed about being pregnant who often feel they have no other option. Sorry, worst of all? We're, we're talking about a bill of abortion, of, of state-sanctioned murder of the unborn. And yet, according to Anthony Fisher, the worst part is the effects on distressed pregnant women? How is that the worst part of this? Yes, these women indeed are victims, being told by the ironically pro-choice crowd that their only choice is an abortion. You have to get an abortion. You have to get an abortion. Praise be the progressive Moloch. But they are not the primary victims here. They are victims, but they are not primary. It is the unborn being slaughtered en masse already in other states, and technically already here in New South Wales, there's many legal loopholes in this issue. But... Uh, no, it's just... For, it's I'm losing my words again. Terribly sorry, this is my first video on a live commentary like this. It just shows how far the pro-life movement has fallen into the, into the, how do I say it, the, the progressive take on the issue. We have allowed them to define the rules of engagement, what language we use, what emphasis it is on. I mean, it all started, the whole abortion rights thing started as a women's rights issue, her body, her choice, this and that. And the pro-life movement rightly got up and said, no, this is not women's rights, this is murder. Of course, the progressive horde has kept on hammering that point. Her body, her choice. What about women who can't take a pregnancy for economic reasons or, you know, they, it's going to disrupt their lifestyle, blah, blah, blah. All this pressure. What about the women? What about the women? What about the women? Over time, many pro-lifers have caved in this area. They have been forced to address so much the issue of what we do with women seeking an abortion. And it's a legitimate area. It's a legitimate concern. Many women are coerced, are threatened to take an abortion by degenerate boyfriends and hateful family. And those people are absolutely disgusting and need to be dealt with. And uh, likewise, many women who take, who com who go for an abortion or a murder, as it really is, will regret it horribly afterwards, and rightly so. And they need to be helped as well. Because God can forgive anyone, even of the worst of sins, except blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, technically. But here's the thing. They have been they have become so much of a priority in this conversation, in this in this war against mass slaughter of the unborn, they take almost an equal position in uh, right next to the unborn victims. And I could see that at our pro-life rally. So many of our signs, so many of our chants we're focused on the women victims who, again, I need to stop qualifying myself. They are actual victims, but they are not on equal footing with the unborn. This sounds harsh, but the women affected by abortion are secondary to the unborn. It's harsh language. I don't want to sound harsh, but it's the clearest way I can really say it. We need to at least from my perspective, in regards to how much we use this language, we need to de-emphasize the effects of women because they are emphasized so much right now. They need to be made known. We need to address it, but it needs to be lessened. And we need to put more force into our language that abortion is murder. And that leads into the issue I brought up on my Facebook post that the so many pro-lifers, at least from what I've seen, 
I don't think many many of us really get the implications of being pro-life. Most people, I hope all, uh, either want murderers, regular murderers, locked up for life or executed, capital punishment. There's a debate that in and of itself, but they, we, everyone would choose between those two options. I'm personally for capital punishment. And we casually say, as pro-life, is abortion is murder. So we, we are effectively calling those who get an abortion murder. How many of us consider the implications of that? How many pro-lifers are willing to say that they advocate for either the lifetime imprisonment or the executions of women who procure an abortion, uncoerced and without threat of death in a medical area, uh, the doctors who perform the abortion and or the degenerate boyfriends who pressure their girls to get an abortion. What do we do about them? Are we prepared to say that, yes, they shouldn't be imprisoned or executed? I personally have my answers on that already. I'll be talking more about it later. But that's the question I want to leave us pro-lifers. Have we considered that? Because by God's grace, there will come a day where the law is on our side. We will be pushing legal change for the equal protections of the unborn legally. That they are that no one has a right to murder them, just as no one has a right to murder any adult human, any conscious human, quote unquote. That's the question I want to leave you guys. Thank you for listening, brothers and sisters. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be upon you.